She was like, what? You play guitar? Right. <laughs> what, uh, what else are you hiding, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Hey everybody, this is Tony. I'm here at 25 Studios doing another In the Trenches. And today I've got musician, sound engineer, artist, actor, Mr. Robert Daniels. How you doing, buddy? I'm good, Tony. How are you? I'm good. There's a horse behind you. <laughs> yeah, um, it's a it's a mule. That's actually my <laughs> favorite Tom Whitaker painting ever. And uh, for some reason, I really, really identify with the mule. It's kind of my spirit animal. Um, <laughs> I, I, feel, animal. I feel like this mule most days. <laughs> Oh, well, I appreciate you uh, doing this. I know you are actually uh, in Lexington getting ready to do a show or recording, right, with uh, yeah. Zoe? Uh, yeah, I'm down uh, sitting in, well, uh, playing with uh, Zoe Howard on Red Barn Radio. So, uh, yeah, cool, fun gig. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody, uh, I, I'm sure there'll be some people that go, wait, Robert, the guy, the sound guy, you know, he's, he plays too, you know, so that, that's cool. Yeah. They're, they're finding out all the facets of, uh, well, he's not just a guy guitar. with a beard. I didn't know you played guitar until you came in, like, just shredding solos, being awesome and stuff. And I'm like, of course, because, like, I've known you playing keys forever. And it's like, oh, yeah, I actually started on guitar. I'm like, of course you did, right? <laughs> it's a, You wouldn't, I mean, you'd be surprised how many people uh, think I'm just a keyboard player, you know, or yeah. or whatever. But actually, my when me and Terry got married, she didn't know I played guitar. And I, literally, I was literally like, I'm going to get together with some guys and go play music. And I was leaving and she went, don't you have to have a keyboard or something? And I went, uh, I play guitar. No, true story. She did not know. We were just married, and she was like, "What? You play guitar? Right. <laughs> what? So. Uh, what else are you hiding? Right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, for uh, so this is I'm doing this thing about behind the scenes people that uh, do. I'm not going to say all the work, but do so much work to make uh, rock stars be rock stars. You know what I mean? There's so, many things, there's so many things going on behind the scenes. There's 30, 40 people sometimes working their butts off and people just come in and get their ticket and sit down and they don't really know. And uh, so I thought I'd like to uh, talk to some people that uh, are there at 7 a.m. to make the 7 p.m. show go smooth, you know. Right. Yeah. So uh, well, appreciate you doing it. First off, though, what does F.O.H. mean? F-O-H is the front of house. That's uh, that's that's where you go when the day starts getting easier. Um, <laughs> that, you know, yeah. that's true. I mean, when you can when you can leave the stage or leave whatever you've been doing all day and you can go back there and get into the captain's chair that I guess that is the. the, the yeah, day that's when you can kind of relax a little bit. And, you know, you probably don't have to push another road case until you start tearing down and loading out. So <laughs> right, right. yeah. Um, I'm sure everybody that's watched this is going to probably know, but for those who don't uh, tell us what you, what you do, where you do it at and uh, that so, whole thing, you're, you're building. Yeah. So I'm the technical director at the mountain arts center. And um, I, I'm also kind of the lead audio engineer, live audio engineer. Um, so uh, I run front of house, uh, you know, monitor, I run monitors if necessary, if, you know, if I can pull a monitor engineer in, then that makes my life easier. So I do that when I can. Right. Um, but um, yeah, it's, uh, for the purposes of this, that's, you know, that's what I do among many, many other things. Right. Like right. I delve into lighting design, set design, um, hey, you're, you're carpentry. Pretty you're a pretty mean jib operator too. I, I, I right, yeah. I, I, I hop on a camera when necessary. So, like, kind of the position that I put myself in is, uh, I, I've really got to be at least competent at basically everything, right. and then, um, you know, beyond that, it's just kind of bonus. But right. um, it's uh, that's a lot of what I do is is like teaching 
new crew members how to do things. And yeah. so yeah. that's really the best way to learn for yourself is right. to teach right. somebody. Yeah. And um, that's I've, I've actually really gotten good fundamentals on on audio and lighting and stuff. But like especially audio, because like whenever I teach people audio, I literally start from, OK, this is a waveform. Wow, this is, yeah. you know, this sound is anything you can hear. Audio <laughs> is whenever that sound is transmitted into electricity. So like I really break it down from the very most basic aspects. Well, you don't want to take anything for granted. You know, you can't assume right. anything that they oh, know. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so whenever I'm, I'm, I'm teaching people, that's, I, I really start from the ground up and wow. then, and probably I'm worse off for it in a way. I don't know. Basically then I just kind of like, bombard them with information right. until they either just give up or if they survive then they have a ton of knowledge to, right. to really go forth with so yeah. um but that I, I start with the science aspect of it because yeah. there's a lot of people that want to jump into audio that really don't understand how important that aspect is Right to what happens, it really is kind of a combination of left brain and right brain. Like you, oh yeah, yeah. You've got to understand how all the science works, but at the same time, you've got to understand how that um, makes these magical musical moments happen. Right. Yeah. And there's so, good, people don't. Uh, you know, there's good frequencies. There's bad. There's ones that work together. There's ones that clash. And I mean, I'm cons consolidating it down to just that, you know, a couple of sentences, but there's so much. It isn't just turning a, a mixer on and pushing faders around. There's so many things. What kind of bass someone has? What kind of kick drum? How old are the cymbals? Is the singer belted out or not? And you are the guy in the back of the Mountain Arts Center but it, with a, this huge console with faders everywhere. And you are orchestrating and hopefully pulling all this together during each of these shows. How long yeah. have you done that? Um, I've really started running front of house at the Mac a lot around 2007. Um, wow. I, I, I kind of got started there working with Jenny Wiley Theater. So... Um, in the fall of 05, I was uh, doing a sound design for him for a show that was coming into the Mac. And so uh, basically, I got my start there. And uh, Mickey Bentley, his technical director at the time, he was like, hey, I need workers. And I was like, I was coming from a theater background, which is all right. really compartmentalized. Like, you know, yeah, Sound people work on sound things, lighting people work on lighting things, set crew works on set things, and nobody yeah. really crosses over. And so I was like, well, what do you need? You need somebody sound, lighting, this or that? He was like, I need someone that yes. can do everything. Yeah. Right. You know, it's more bang for your buck that way, I guess. <laughs> but well, so I was like, I mean, yeah, I'm not really, scared yeah. to do anything. Right. Yeah. So you, were, you came from uh, theater, the theater world, uh, Jenny Wiley Theater, that whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, Which I played oh, music yeah. a lot, but I really didn't, hadn't ran concerts until right. I got to the Mac. Yeah. Right. So for people who uh, don't know, what is the when you're bringing in? Let's say you're doing a uh, Travis Tritt. Uh, what? How? When do you show up that morning to do a show? Usually that's start at eight o'clock. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Usually it's seven or eight o'clock in the morning, and. Um, you, you basically have enough time to get some coffee and uh, take a walk. If, if, if anybody from coming in off the road is coming in, maybe you give them a quick tour, give them, right. let them play the land, give them an idea of what their day is, you know, kind of let them wrap their head around what they're getting into that day as right. far as the venue. And then uh, the truck backs in and the doors open up and gear starts rolling in. And, um, yeah, you kind of don't stop until uh, sound check, especially with a big national tour like that. They're usually yeah. pretty self contained. So, like, once you yeah. get their stuff in and get their stuff in place, get power where it needs to go, all of that stuff, a lot of times they kind of take over from there. And, right. you know, the local crew kind of breaks 
until pretty much showtime. Right. I always say someone kind of like in your position that you're going to be there all day, no matter what. You don't. Oh have to yeah. Leave. yeah. But you're like an audio EMT. You're there oh, exactly. in case something tears <laughs> up. Right. That's well, a really I mean, good way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, my whole life I've been the guy that I go, "Hey, I'm glad everything's going good. I'll be over here." You know, yeah. here's my phone number. If something breaks, give me a shout. And that's what you're doing. You're you're an audio EMT, you know, for the rest of the day. Ironically, yeah, most too, riders, you know, they call for an audio person and a lighting person, at least one of each on site. Right. You know, with them all day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, uh, what's funny, too, not a lot of people see riders, but a lot of riders say um, English speaking, sober, no flip flop. <laughs> tech person you know the bar is pretty low sometimes you know right <laughs> we must be able to communicate you can't be drunk and you have to have some shoes on but we'll take you close toe shoes three. yeah close toe <laughs> shoes is pretty pretty necessary more often than not but but yeah, yeah that's, that's funny to think the bar is pretty low <laughs> they don't mention like knowledgeable or skilled or anything like no we just need to be able to talk and you understand it Familiar uh, with the building. Yeah. They say that sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Got to be familiar with the building that you work at. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, well, so you've done, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of people don't know this too. A uh, lot of the national acts, well, well uh, this is two parts here. First of all, the yeah. sometimes bigger the act, the smoother the show runs. Because they, if they're on tour or something, they have all their ducks in a row. I mean, so sometimes now the pressure isn't lower, but because, you know, you have to keep it up here, but, but they have all their ducks throw and then they show up with their own front of house guy, their own sound guy. Uh, yeah. 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 So those are usually, uh, you know, in some ways they're easier days. Um, it's, it, I guess it's just though. a different set of challenges, I guess I would yeah. say, because yeah. you're, you're, you're not really, doing the work of the show as much you're more kind of facilitating the people that are doing the work of the show exactly. so in, in a lot of ways you're you, you're sometimes covering more ground oh yeah just going back and forth and running around for them and like track tracking anything down that they that they might need um right. but overall you know those those are easier days in in the fact that like you know you're not you're, you're not getting to know work. a band and do a sound check with them in that moment you know right. they're working with somebody that they already know and yeah. as long as they have what they need which is what you're providing right. then uh it's it's a pretty smooth day usually yeah uh, uh, another thing I want you to talk about, because this is just, uh, and I'm, like I said, I'm trying to just hit these points that people are like, what? That goes on? Right. You know, but, yeah. Um, so a show's happening this Friday, let's say. Uh, at what point did you start talking to them and working out everything and looking at actual contracts and that kind of stuff? At, at least, at least two weeks prior. If it's not by, if I haven't at least made contact two weeks prior, then I'm late. Right. Or yeah, big time. I was going to, yeah. I, I figured it would be even be more, you know, a month or something. Oh yeah. Well, and, and I mean, depending on, you know, the, the side so more often than not, I try to reach out like a month or month and a half before, yeah. or basically as soon as I get the advance information, I just go ahead and make the call touch right. base. If they don't have time for me right then. We'll schedule a time, but yeah. um, you know, wor worst case scenario, mm -hmm at least two weeks right. and then if it hasn't happened by that point then that's when i start getting scared you know <laughs> yeah. yeah and you know like i was saying at the beginning there's so many moving parts there's so many things that goes on to make a show happen and weeks you know sometimes two weeks sometimes six weeks ahead you're like hashing things out and they're asking for this and you're making sure you've got it and you, uh, in the position that you're in, you have to kind of wrap all that around your head, make sure that the power, the lighting, the, the staging, everything is going to flow when they show up. Because we all know that the day they show up, it all better be there, just like you promised. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, there's, there's, I mean, there's also kind of a set of challenges, you know, uh, doing this for a venue 
you know, a thousand seat venue in Eastern Kentucky, because like a lot of national acts that have never been to the Mac, they look at that on their tour schedule and go, Oh gosh, performing arts center in Eastern Kentucky. Like this is geez, they're not going to have anything we need. And so like right then, right off the bat, I'm, I'm kind of in the position where like, I've got to like convince them that we're going to be able to pull this off. Right. And yeah. You know, that's always a rough place to start. And like basically every single time, by the time they get there and they start working, they understand, okay, we are well equipped and knowledgeable and right. we can. But, you know, the whole time leading up to that, they're like, are they, they, they can't really be able to do this. So um, that, that can be challenged on advanced uh, show. What I love, uh, and yeah, you know, what I love about the Mac and and the staff there, uh, you and you and, and Mike and everybody, uh, you guys obviously a lot of you do a lot of local events, a lot of local things. You work on a weekly basis with local bands, regional bands, and you guys really give them the same attention and the same care that you do with uh, Travis Tritt or Exile or whoever else comes through there. And uh, it's really uh, just a, uh, a nod to you guys that you really do that. And you don't have that sneer, that look of like, oh, this is just this is just but, Tony and those guys from down in Pikeville, you know, and you roll your eyes. And I've noticed that I've I've been lucky to be involved in several different scenarios there. And you guys like really give it 100 percent. Absolutely. I mean, we take a lot of pride in that. And and and, and I'll, honestly, like I. I, I instill it in my younger crew members that if they, if I ever really catch any of that kind of attitude, like I, I shut it down immediately because like the local, the local talent that we promote, I feel is just as good and just as valid as any national act that comes in. And so like, and they deserve every, like every bit that we can give them or, you know, all it's, right. there's, at no point should you phone it in. Like, exactly. I mean, life's too short. Like, you know, <laughs> go, go hard yeah, every day, exactly. especially, and especially for the local talent, because I mean, yeah. that's the people that really need to be put in the best light yeah. and, and, and really be able to give everyone their best product because, yeah. you know, they're still, they're, they're trying to make it happen, you know? Right. So, and, and I personally, I really feel like if you if you really do that well for somebody on the way up, maybe they'll they'll remember it and come back to your venue whenever you know they've they've made it or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, whereas, yeah. like, if you kind of if you kind of write them off and phone it in when they're on their way up, then after you know once they start doing a national tour, they're like, oh yeah, I remember them. They were kind of a turd to me. Uh, <laughs> We don't have yeah. to put them on our schedule, you know. So oh, yeah, and you know, uh, and just be big, good to people, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny too? As big as the industry is, it's very tight knit, and people remember buildings and crews. I couldn't tell you how many times a crew has come in that my company is working at, and they go, "Oh yeah, we know you, the one with the gal steward. Yeah, we like you all, you know." Or they'll, we were talking to so and so, and they said, "If you go to Pipeville, they'll take care of you." But, you know, conversely, if you're jerks, they're going to say that, too, you know. And oh, yeah. 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 If big, even more, you know. <laughs> so if they if they have a bad experience at the Mac, you just never know the ripple effect of how it gets, you know, shared that it's, you know, don't th that place is a nightmare to work at, you know. Absolutely. And you guys don't That's have you, you guys don't have that. Uh, and, you know, uh, on a regional uh, uh, point. To get to play at the Mac is one of those badges, you know, like you finally got to play at the Mac. It's something very cool. And it's awesome that you guys take that as serious as the band's finally getting to play there, you know. Uh, yeah. It's a good experience. Um, speaking of experiences, and this is an impossible question, but I ask it anyway. What, if you have one, what was your most memorable show that you've uh, been a part of there? Not necessarily you ran sound, but because you orchestra, you know, you're always there helping orchestrate it. But what's your most memorable yeah. show? I don't know that I could pinpoint it to one. I mean, um, John Prine really sticks out because that oh, was yeah. like the only time I ever 
got to see John Prine in person and I was working the shows. So I was getting paid to see John Prine for the only time in my life. But it was a really, it was the first time I ever experienced like a, a room full of a thousand people literally knowing every single word to every single song by heart and just like it it was like a religious experience in a lot of ways um, goose creek symphony man uh, oh. i'll never forget that one either um you know well really even as recently as tyler childers he kind of had a lot of that same kind of john prine effect that like everybody that was there was was there to sing along to those songs because they knew every single word yeah. um Chris Stapleton was a really cool experience last time we had him because um, it was a three day run. So they, they basically hung out for three days right? and, you know, we just, we just had one load in and they didn't have load out for like two days after that. So it was a really easy, smooth thing. And uh, just getting to spend time with really nice people like that, that, kind of like pull the curtain back on everything and yeah yeah you know like i mean you know he was showing me his guitars and stuff and uh it it just blew my mind like the baritone guitar he was playing at the time he found on ebay for like 200 bucks and it was this little squire thing and i was like well how good could that be but then he plugs it into that old princeton brown face and it's just like you know just the biggest sound you ever heard in your life so anyway yeah that was super and andy had robbie turner with him on that tour so um like (laughs) yeah that's pretty memorable yeah steel player so anyway yeah there those are the ones i can think of off the top of my head but there's so many that's like yeah Uh, I mean, you know, for me, you know, the thought that government mule and Tedeschi trucks was there and, you know, absolutely. You know, that's, that's mind blowing that, that, uh, that could happen 20 minutes from my home, you know, and you guys. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man, honestly, Tedeschi trucks was probably like the most advanced work I've ever done on a show. Uh, just to, yeah. And, and really like, we hadn't really done like a, a, a front of house trust up to that point or anything like right. that. So I had to like dig into the, the building specs and look at all the ratings on the, the steel overhead and actually like contact the steel manufacturer yeah. to confirm for their production manager. Yes, we can they hold can. this weight. Right. You know, we can make this happen. Um, yeah, I mean, just that that one little snapshot of that show, people don't think about it, but you just don't go hang stuff in a building. You go, how? what is the load? What can we, you know, what can we point? How heavy are our speakers? How heavy is our motor? Oh, yeah. Our, our backdrop, you know, is, th- well, is 300 pounds, you know, that kind of thing. Even from there, you're not just calculating the load that it is, but like it's a dynamic load going up. So that's a different calculation for once it's up in the air. Right. And, uh, yeah, that that show in particular, I probably started advancing about six months prior. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, man, it was a lot of work. But by the time it was all done, like just being able to like go to the back of the house and go, this is happening. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way that's that's what I would say, too. That's what I probably yeah. said. A half a dozen times during the day. I like Joe's quote. You know, he was his he was all sweaty and nervous and it was having him. And I said, are we going to do it? He went, they're bigger than our building, but we're going to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, my gosh. Uh, the PA they brought in was ridiculous. Like, yeah. just huge, huge. Yeah. But I mean, it sounded incredible. Like the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. But as good a concert production as I've, as I've ever Right. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's really cool that, uh, you know, you're one day you're working with uh, Tedeschi Trucks. The next day you're working with Sean Whiting and and the building facilitates good entertainment for the community on all those levels. Those, you know, ever everybody from uh, Front Porch Picking to John Prine, you know, and yeah. uh, uh, I think you got a pretty cool gig. Absolutely. I think it's a really cool gig. <laughs> Um, uh, well, listen, uh, I think um, uh, I appreciate you uh, getting on a phone and just doing this out on the streets, waiting to do a show. Um, Sorry uh, about the so, sirens and all that stuff. Uh, it's, it's all cool. So you got you're in uh, uh, 
one a band for yourself too, right? A blues band. Yeah, yeah, I play in a Mystery Meat Blues Band with Adam Mystery Williams. Mystery Meat Blues Band. Okay, so and then you sit in with uh, Zoe and whoever else wants to give you a shout. I'm, I'm assuming. Basically, basically, if they're desperate enough to use me, then I'll be there for them. You know, like, <laughs> I had a call one time, and a guy said, "I have called for three days trying to find a guitar player, and I can't find anybody. You want to do it?" <laughs> that really happened to me, and I was like, "Well, That's since me. you called." everybody you know and you can't find anyone but you i guess okay i'll do it <laughs> right yeah it's like i'm not the best but i'll do it till the best comes along right that's yeah, exactly <laughs> oh man hey listen i appreciate you doing this uh, uh it's really cool I, I love talking things behind the scenes i'm going to tell you what i told uh, uh eli the reason i got this idea to do this in the trenches thing i was talking with a guy who worked for me a few shows ago and we were talking about you know 40 people behind behind this big curtain and it was all and i said hey man thanks for working today and he said my entire life i wanted to be on the other side of this fence and i finally am and i was like you know it's so cool that that what we do we is in me you and him you know we love it and it's in our blood and it was so cool that he was like i finally am on the other side you know getting to do this kind of thing and i thought how cool let's let's talk to some people and share some stories about being being on that side of the fence absolutely <laughs> all right man listen you have a good show rock it out uh, the red barn is lucky to have zoe and you guys and uh do your thing and uh, i'll let you know when this thing comes out right on thanks man all right man <laughs> talk to you later all right peace okay Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it one more time so we can be like, all right, cool. And then I'll edit it. Okay. Hey. All right, Robert, I appreciate you being here with me doing this thing. You guys have a good show tonight, the Red Barn, and I will see you soon. All right. Later. <laughs> That's it. That's the one we're doing. I said, every time I say talk to you later, I say see you soon. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But, but before you hang out, let me hit stop on the record.